All right, final chapter here, chapter 15 of internal auditing. This chapter is pretty straightforward. Just some reading there for you to do on the consulting engagement. Now we've been talking about assurance engagement audits in this chapter. But this, in previous chapters, but this chapter is about consultation, advisory services and so forth. Uh, it's really providing insight that the internal audit function can help with, with efficiency, effectiveness, helping designing internal controls and so forth. And that can be a catalyst for positive change. And oftentimes internal audit is viewed as a, the bad guy in the corporation trying to catch people which is part of their job, but they also can be a great source of um, expertise. A lot of people working in internal audit have come from other departments within the organization. They have a lot of business process knowledge and that's very valuable. A lot of times they've got very good communication skills. They uh, collaborate, they can have really a systems view of things and very valuable. But here we're talking about consulting with various departments within to really give advice. So bottom of page 15-7, the advisory consulting engagements, and they list several examples here of what exactly internal audit can do in this type of engagement, which is defined separate from assurance engagement. Uh, control design, development policies and procedures, advisory role for high risk projects, such as IT, you know, that's an area that most people in CPAs and accountants struggle with is the IT side. <clears throat> Top of page 15A, advising on security breaches, continuity, business continuity interruptions, um, enterprise risk. So there's a lot of things that uh, internal audit can help if they have the competency within their department. Uh, uh, turning on through these various pages that you're going to read on your own. Uh, of course, communication is a big part of that. They give two examples of 1518 and 1519, the actual communication or consulting engagement communication. Uh, those two pages, the project and the results, outcomes. They use the term there on uh, significant concerns on 15-19 under functional gap completion. Functional gaps remain open, which have been deemed as showstoppers for client data conversion project. But as it says in 15-20 and 1521, the changing landscape for consulting services. Um, again, just the, what they can do, what your internal audit department can do is describe very specific there on the top of page 1521 with building relationships with other departments Increase the internal auditor subject internal auditor subject matter expertise through training, rotating internal auditors from other business units and departments. I know Eastman does a great job of that. We've had a lot of interns that have gone there and they kind of rotate from one department to another while they are there. And the more experience you get in those various areas, then you can uh, promote into internal audit. <clears throat> and because uh, it has such a high profile in the uh, in a company since they're reporting to the CAE and the board of directors. And it even specifically mentions hiring associates from other business units into the internal audit function. You know, skills and expertise or experience required, facilitation, collaboration, broad business experience, the more educated you are in various areas, the more qualified you would be with um, specific subject matter, especially in the IT area, is so important. Strong interpersonal skills, thinking analytically, being able to articulate and communicate results quickly. This is a good end of the text chapter to talk about internal audit and how they are qualified to do much more than just be a watchdog, but they are there for advisory, for consulting. So I've enjoyed this semester. Hopefully you've gotten something out of this class. I appreciate all your hard work on those deliverables. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. If not, good luck in your career and I, I wish you well.